Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives right after they put out important news. And this guy's putting one out every couple of days. We're happy to have him back. Rob Anson, CEO, founder, Loop Insights, trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the stock symbol MTRX. For those of you new to the story, and that's going to be a lot of you because we got a ton of investors who've been following the company for the last several months. And then as the company is this market darling, we know that more people are watching. So what do they do? They're a provider of contactless solutions and artificial intelligence. What's that doing is they're driving real-time insights, more customer engagement, and automated venue tracing to the brick and mortar space. All of this is to make the brick and mortar spaces more efficient, more profitable, in fact, just to get up and running. Uh, more than just lip service, the contact tracing side was accepted in TELUS Marketplace. Uh, they just finished, uh, they're, they're in the middle of Vegas bubble and beach bubble. Those are two NCAA Division I basketball events in major arenas with major properties. Uh, on the artificial intelligence side, their, their products were implemented with your CBD store, the largest US retailer of CBD with over 500 locations. They've got a test pilot with TELUS on three flagship locations, and that's the press release. I'm going to read it. Loop Insights launches second product into TELUS IoT Marketplace for national sales and marketing to TELUS business customers across the country. Rob, congratulations. Welcome back. Before we get into the specifics of this amazing second product going to TELUS Marketplace, I mean, most companies would dream about one, and you've got two. How big is it to the company, to its credibility, uh, in the, to the rest of the world to have your second product go into the TELUS IoT marketplace? Well, it's, 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 it's huge uh, for a couple of reasons key here. Um, you know, wh when we look at the retail space, understandably, we're coming up to a blackout period, as they call it, where nobody wants or can afford any disruption due to the Christmas rush. So, you know, to see what's been built up in the back end now with the TELUS um, sales teams is quite spectacular. So I'm very, very excited here for, for January to roll around. I'm not trying to, you know, of course, push through time and, and my family with the holidays, but um, every day kind of feels like Christmas Day right now. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting. So to have our second product now, it's, um, you know, I had tremendous reach out yesterday, um, not just from opportunities, but from some of the, the telcos that we've been working with. And, you know, it's, um, let's just say it, it's putting us in a, a very strong position now because everyone's always looking at this, as I've said before, and, you know, um, we haven't quite uh, rolled out the game plan as far as the, the remainder of the corporate locations yet to date. But, um, you know, the endorsement, if you will, designation of our second product there is um, definitely um, a good good view as of what's to come. And for people who are new, back in the summertime, uh, the company had stated that they were talking to four of the biggest telcos. They had, they had publicly stated that two in Canada, two in the U.S. So obviously, Rob, that's what you're referring to. And given the fact that TELUS was first and then second again, I'm assuming... This is the, these are the kind of developments that start to nudge people off the fence if, the, if they were on the fence to begin with. Yeah, George, everything I'm doing here is cookie cutter. It's, you know, I've said from day one, you know, I'm building a channel reseller business model um, that enables us to achieve global scale through our, our channel partners, such as TELUS and others that we have on board to date. Our technology partners is Shopify, and of course, with Vend and the others we're working on now, our integrations, it helps us remain extremely agile, um, you know, and, and highly profitable as we move forward here into 2021. So it's the same thing I've done here. Um, I've used the TELUS template is the same framework for all of them. Um, you know, we've got several going down the same path and uh, I look forward to January. This stem from the pilot test with the three TELUS flagship stores. And you had two goals in mind. One of them was to get the product in the, uh, in, into the IoT marketplace. And by the way, for everyone that's new, this is the artificial intelligence and insights uh, that's basically at the point of sale. So that's safe to say the pilot has been successful. Can we infer that from this? It's, the, the, uh, it's obviously going so well that they're 
Yeah, and ultimately, of course, I can't speak for TELUS, but you know, we we presented the final findings. Um, we've delivered what we were supposed to, and much, much more. Um, and the, of course, the approval here speaks volumes as to what's what's about to come. And um, more importantly, it gives us just continued growth opportunity. And you know, to the fact of now, of course, the tracing and COVID and this whole thing is front and center and, and the travel bubbles and this that we'll get into, I'm sure here. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, people need to understand, you know, as, as to your point, there's a lot of new eyeballs. Um, you know, I get inundated with people, oh, well, you're just a contact tracing company. And you know, do some due diligence, people. Um, look at what's under the hood. We are a very high-powered AI computing data company. First and foremost, we are an IoT company. Second, uh, and it's all about applications. There's dozens and dozens of applications and COVID and venue management and tracing. Those are just very, very small pieces of our puzzle. At the end of the day, George, everything always reverts back to data. And our real-time data applications is what sets us apart. Well, clearly, that's that's uh, you ran a pilot test with your CBD store where you did a pilot with twenty, uh, and they end up saying roll it out to all five hundred and fifty uh, of our locations. So clearly, what's happening is you're able to provide them such such better quality data to make their business better. Essentially, if you take away all the complicated tech, that's really what you're doing at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, everyone has investments, right? Whether it's in IT, whether it's in loyalty applications or, or whatnot, you know, our ability to take all of those existing assets to simply plug them into one network, if you will, and provide all that automation and enable them to provide better experience, operational efficiencies, marketing attribution, you know, whatever that may be. Um, it's all about profitability at the end of the day. And that, that's what we're bringing to them. Um, you know, artificial intelligence is all about application and automation. You know, that's, um, that's our biggest attribute. And that's what's put us in these things. I mean, you know, 550 locations is our first, you know, real contract, I would say. You know, that's, that's great, but that, that's really the smallest piece of the puzzle where we started here. You know, my, my main objective was to validate the technology, of course, uh, validate the business model um, and the demand. What is the true demand for this? And as I'm starting to experience, you know, we've checked all three boxes. And um, you know, as I said, from Vegas, we're we're now in the position of enterprise trophy hunting. And, and let me ask you about that. So the kind of calls you're getting in now, it's interesting that you say that. Uh, that you're saying that your CBD store, which I thought at the time when it happened was a really big deal, and it was a great deal, but. Um, what, are the, what are the kind of calls, you, I know you can't give specific, but what are the kind of calls you're getting and the, and the meetings you're already having if, if people at home can get a, a flavor for you know, who, wants to, who wants to now incorporate the company's technology? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've had probably two dozen calls in the last 48 hours since our travel, uh, travel bubble success announcement um, from football organizations all over Europe. Uh, we've got different groups in Australia that have reached out around their reopenings and re-engagement. Um, trade shows has been a huge, huge outcry uh, in the last uh, two days as well. Um, Especially in Vegas, right, Rob, where you're not talking about trade shows, you're talking about yeah. many cities for a week, like CES, for example, is a big Yeah, for sure. Yep, yeah. yeah. no, no, we've got some of the largest trade shows and uh, have reached out, of course, the facilities, which are the operators um, in, in Vegas and Orlando and Chicago and, you know, New York um, are reaching out. You know, it, it's been, uh, <clears throat> so I'm losing my voice, as you can tell. It's been a whirlwind. Um, and, and, and the best part about it, George, is like I said, these early stage validations were 100% key. Um, you know, our successful launch of the bubble to have, you know, in, at the, the peak, if you will, of the pandemic, if you look at all the data, to be at the peak of the pandemic, to deliver something in two major cities, such as Fort Myers, Florida, and Las Vegas, um, you know, be fully self-contained, end-to-end testing, tracing, security, 
um, you know, I, I, I could only hope and pray for that, but uh, ultimately to deliver that is another thing. And that's really what caught the interest here is there's so many groups talking about things and building solution stacks. Right. We're already deploying. And, you know, the early bird gets the worm, as they say, you know, we're starting to reap some of those benefits. And time is of the essence, right? You're talking about sports organizations that cannot go another year, another half season with empty seats and so on and so forth. So it, 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 this isn't a feature. This isn't something that's nice to have. It's a must have now, right? So you either have it, you put it in place or you miss your season. Yeah. What's well, <clears throat> excuse me. It's, it's not even that, um, you know, it's not about you no know, next season. It's about the season we're in, you know, you've got teams right. that are being relocated from their stadiums, right. <laughs> Which is, you know, even truly hard to believe um, in case with the 49ers, you know, you've got other other teams that are looking in the same boat. They've got no fans. You've got bowl games coming up with NCAA, you know, at Christmas into the new year. Um, it's all about that at, at home engagement. Um, and, you know, we have a very, very talented marketing team that's been very, very creative on some of these uh, approaches and ideologies and applications that we've built and pitched. And, you know, um, they're getting eaten up because it's, it's all about that at-home engagement now. It's how do we monetize, how do we engage our audience while we have it today? We can't just live on next year. I mean, we gotta, I mean, there is no next year. I mean, to get to the bottom of the ninth, you gotta get through the bottom of the eighth first. And it's the same thing here. Time is of the essence. There's billions of dollars being lost um, every week that goes by, you know? So providing some of these um, processes and protocols and opportunities um, you know, we're, we're set to deliver things, not next year, but today. So the great thing about the business, Rob, is as the uh, retail IoT side maybe starts to slow down because like I think it's Christmas season. So they're not going to they're not going to interrupt, but they're going to be ready for January. At the same time, the at home solution, the venue tracing, the bubbles, those are relevant right now. So you, well, guys, all you guys can they, do this. Don't get me wrong. There's no pause. There's no such thing as pause and in, in our world. I mean, you know, we're, we're, uh, you know, burning the candle pretty thin, as they say. So I don't pause for anything. I'm pushing harder than I ever have before. <clears throat> when I say the, the retail slows down because of new implementations is just building our pipeline. You know, we're planning everything now for, for January. And that's why I said before, we're, we're just starting to crawl, right? We're walking, um, you know, 2021, uh, in January is when we begin to go a little faster. And this is what I said here, we're, you know, not to wish the time to run by here, but, um, you know, I'm very, very excited here for January's return. Um, how last kind of last question, or maybe it'll, it'll stem a couple more, but how deep have your, uh, have a lot of your conversations gone? Are they still, are most of them still on the tertiary level? So, Hey, Rob, let's talk. Or have you, had multiple, have you had enough of these pipeline discussions where you're near to the end of the cycle? Okay, just to give everyone a sense at home of where, where you're at yeah. in a lot of these things. I mean, these are, like I said, these aren't small organizations we're dealing with. They're multiple, multiple levels. Um, you know, these conversations are all at senior executive level and, and CFO level. Um, it's all about numbers now. And, um, you know, we're, it's going to be a, a very busy close to the, the Christmas season here. Um, you know, we'll get a, hopefully a few day break with our friends and families. Um, well, I guess remotely, but you know, it's uh, we're, we're, we're in, it's now just about numbers, George. We're, we're looking at timing. Uh, how fast can you get this implemented is the next question. Actually, that was going to be my question. I, that yeah. was, so do you mind if I kind of ask you that? If, sure. I, if I'm a big organization, say, Rob, I need it yesterday. How fast can you guys typically deploy on the, on the typical product? Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, we've got some very large hospitality resort operators that, you know, are asking for a 30-day turnaround. So, I mean, that's typically unheard of. But, um, you know, going back to what we built about automating processes, that's possible. Um, you know, so for us, it's one of the key things, how much and how fast. And, you know, fortunately, we've been able to check boxes on both levels, um, which is, you know, bodes well. 
and we'll see what happens there. This is the point where I normally say, "Hey, look forward to having you back again soon." But it's almost assured that where you're going to be back, you're going to be back again soon from from the sounds of it. So, congratulations on your success with the venue bubbles, because quite clearly that real world experience really took the company to another level. And uh, and speak on behalf of everyone at home, you know, we see the excitement online, all the different groups uh, online, and I think we all say. Thank you and congratulations and, and good luck in the next few days, couple of weeks, couple of months, because there is no time frame yeah. right now. We've got, um, yeah, I mean, same side of it. You know, I, I do my best to reach out to everyone. <clears throat> you know, um, I think it's part of it. Like I said, I'm, I'm a normal guy, right? That. Uh... I, I wouldn't say you're a normal guy because the rest of us can't put together artificially <laughs> driven uh, contact uh, contract tracing, customer engagement, automated venue solutions. But, uh, but yeah, otherwise you do live 24 hours a day, right? I'm losing my voice here. Yeah. But, but no, but I am, I'm a normal guy and I, I appreciate everyone's time and money that they've put into this. Um, you know, we work hard and uh, we're getting there. It takes time. Like I said, it's patience. Um, but to see everything come together now, it's, it's pretty cool. It's exciting. <clears throat> We've got uh, a very big, uh, Q1 coming up, I'm sure, with uh, all that's been in, in the pipeline and ready to unload. And, um, you know, I'm most excited about providing opportunity for people to reestablish their life and get back to, you know, what was norm, I guess. Um, definitely won't be taking certain things for granted anymore. But, you know, we, we have a pivotal time here in technology that we can enable so much of this to happen. And, that's my excitement. I mean, I push very, very hard, George, every day on so many different angles and yeah, you know, know go faster than others. And, you know, some of them you can lead a horse to water, as they say, and can't force them to drink. But, you know, I keep banging and uh, I've got some pretty big mitts and eventually the doors can open. Well, Rob, listen, between two venue bubbles, tell us and everything else that's been happening. Uh, uh, no, <coughs> no, no one's had to be patient with you. You've been delivering. So, Get your throat back because I'm sure you got more conversations because we're still in the middle of the day. Thanks yeah, so much for joining us today. And I don't know, we'll have you. I don't know if we're going to have you back in 48 hours or 72 hours or a week, but I know you're going to be back. And good luck with everything you're doing in between. Yeah, thanks, George. You've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, or Apple to Rob Anson, CEO and founder of Loop Insights, trades at the TSX Venture Exchange on the stock symbol MTRX. For those of you who are new to the story, we got a lot of veterans here, love you, but we also got a lot of new people and we know that this kind of cutting edge breaking technology is not the easiest thing to understand. So get yourself over to Agoracom first, punch in the company's name or stock symbol, go in the profile section. We've kind of got a layman's overview of, of what Loop is all about, but then get over to the company's website to do more due diligence. And finally, what I strongly recommend this weekend, watch the last three or four interviews that we've done with Rob because that's probably the best way. And if you, don't, if you don't have time to watch, when you go on your walks, listen. When you're uh, when you're driving, listen. But you can find all those in the broadcast center in Agoracom. Just search Loop. They'll all come up and you, wouldn't, you won't get better uh, information than that. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Talk to you next time.